All right, so I decided to work on a whole new project recently. I've been working on a, um, like a, I don't know, a Minecraft sort of type game, like a survival type game. I'm calling it Landycraft right now, and um, I might change that, but I actually kind of like the name, and I usually name a lot of my games uh, something craft. Like I used to have med Medieval Craft and stuff like that. Um, it's pretty old school, but I still like it. But here's the game. And uh, it's exactly how you expect. So it's a top, well, it's not a top down view. It's like a isometric kind of view of, of um, these like blocks and stuff. Um, and the game is going to be like, you know, uh, you know, get your wood and get stone, mine things, um, survive. And I, I, I want to like have like entities and bosses and like a RPG in a way. But anyway, so I just kind of wanted to talk about, well, first of all, this is an announcement video of the game. Um, and I'm at that stage in the game where I don't think I'm gonna like just give up on it at, at like a random time So I can make an announcement of it uh, but I want to talk about um, How the game kind of works uh, so Let's first look at how many variables there are right now um, Not too many right now, but uh, these are very efficiently used so that's why and then here's the functions list which I'm actually going too fast for you to even pause it, but um, you can see that's a little bit longer. And so the way it works is um, everything is, here's the master um, uh, exe, I guess you can say. Um, and this is what's running everything. So right now in the beginning, I set up, um, so actually before I go into that, I have this system that I made, uh, which should be, it's under memory. Oh, it's right here. Duh. So this whole area that has memory and then something next to it, all of these are for the memory system that I made that can handle list nesting. So you have a list of items, and in one of those items, you have a whole other list in there. And that's how I handle all the blocks and things like that, um, but not the player. Uh, oh, and it's not going to run because this is not connected. Um, so yeah, so all these blocks, these are all um, in a... Uh, a list of items that's so the first list is called a, the world list then inside that I got world blocks now I was originally just having this called blocks but the um, it like blocks is inside world but in the way the memory works it creates a list outside of the world list so if I go in here you can see that if I take off everything and I just have these two you can see that it creates a list so the things that have the list tag and then the list slash tag are the top and bottom of that list. So in this list, it's called world. It has the name world. Um, it has one item and it's world blocks. So this used to be blocks, but then down here it would say list blocks, and then it'd have nothing. Have it would have the name blocks. It had zero and then then blocks. And the problem with that is that if I ever actually make a list called blocks specifically, that's not even part of the world, then um, it will, it will like get messed up with this block. So I tagged it world blocks and then, yeah. Then the next thing is when I create a block type, it adds a block. It's a type of grass. It's this shape. So these blocks are custom shaped. I made them out of like little assets. So if I come down here, you can see they are, um, if I can just scroll over, they are like little parts of the image. As you can see, I'm going to go through them a little bit. And yeah, so this is the base texture of the front face. And then I just kind of add a little line and little like a uh, lightning thing on the left side or the right side or whatever the side it is on. And then for the top, they're shorter. Uh, so this is a whole unit uh, block. It's six tall instead of eight tall. Well, uh, sorry, it's three tall instead of eight tall. Six pixels and this one's 16 pixels. But in Scratch, it, it separates two pixels or a four by four pixel is one pixel it considers it so this is eight by eight as you see right over here even though it's 16 by 16 of a texture um and yeah and so that's how i do that i also have a stone so if i switch over um switch back and i actually close that for just one second and i type this as stone the big one i'm standing on is going to turn into stone uh, and so that's how it works so it's just custom size and i can make this like 100 it's gonna be a little slower but um that's how it works and now uh, so hold on, there's a lot to say actually <laughs> about how it works and how efficient I've made it. Uh, I'll say this right now, any 
any image, any part of any of these custom images that's outside the screen won't render. The the scratch the sprite will go there, I think. Oh no, it won't go there, but it will have it will calculate everything for it to go off screen. But um, it it's uh, the way I have the system set up. All I have to do is say, okay, if that position is off screen, then then don't render anything, and then it makes it a lot more efficient. This would be running at like four FPS right now if I didn't have that. Um, so uh, I think if I put this to a hundred as well, it's still, it's gonna be slow, but but yeah, like this would just be insane. There's a thousand images uh, or uh, ten thousand images, and then plus the four height, so a lot more. There's a lot of images trying to be rendered there, and Scratch would not be able to handle that normally. Okay, let me get back to the list thing. So. The way it works is basically um, you create a list and then you add that list name. And then when you go and read from the list, if I come down here, and this is not the fun part, I should actually, um, let me, let me, before I do that, sorry, I'm kind of going all over the place, but before I do it, let me show off the game just a little bit more. Um, as you kind of saw earlier, and I'll leave that as, actually, I, I want that grass, but I'll, I'll make the bottom one stone, like this one, I think. There's still some work to do with the ordering, but, oh, I thought that was this one. Um, so yeah, here's the game. I made the little character and he's got a little animation when he jumps and when he falls. Um, and also, sorry, I should show this. So I have a rendering order system that every time the block is created, it figures out where the order uh, of the block should go so that it's always in front if it's actually in front in the real world. And that a similar method is being used, in, but instead of that method that I just mentioned being a cache method, so it... It, when it's created, when a block's created, it puts it where it needs to go. The the one for the character is like a live one. So it's a little slower, but that's how you have to do it because the player is always moving. And so it will always like render behind things if it needs to. And that's how you get this behind effect. So if I come over here, you can see I'm behind the front cube, but I'm like not in this cube. And then obviously I have all the physics working. So it it's um, no matter where these blocks go, I can move this one. Uh, let's see, it's a smaller one. If I move this one five over, then it's still working and everything's fine. The, the, physics, the physics are all there. Uh, then I also have the shadow effect so that you can tell what, what height things are. Um, all I do for that is I get the players at X and Z position, and then Y is the vertical one. And I say, okay, whatever block that I'm like inside on the X and y, uh, Z position, get the height of that block and place the shadow on it. And then based on the distance from the player's height and the shadow's height, make it more or less or less transparent, more transparent. Yeah. Um, also, by the way, this wood texture is not finalized. This one was just uh, really like, I went into um, a sprite and just whipped up something really fast. This is the one that I spent a while on. Um, I also should mention if you, if you don't use scratch like religiously, then you wouldn't see something like this. But if I go to the Explore page, there's this this uh, uh, um, game. And this is the inspiration I got for the pixel art. Um, and that's music. Uh, I wish I could turn that off. But um, there's never, I, I still haven't figured out how to do that in Scratch. But yeah, the actually, I know how to do that. I could just, I could probably just find it in here. Honestly, if I just delete, actually, I could just delete the uh, audio sounds. Yeah, it's not that long. I could just spam them to delete all that. Okay. That is strange. What? Oh, it's probably in another sprite. Okay, there's the meow. There's the pop. So these are all the basic stuff. So yeah, pop just comes with it. Oh, it's it's probably in background. Yeah. Okay. So this is the game, and it's like a platformer. Um, and you just try to dodge these guys. But I really like the style of the art. Right, so I decided to adopt that style, and then for the stone, I made that my own texture, and everything else I'm gonna make my own texture. But this was a cool style, um, and I actually did change it a little bit. If you go into the costumes, you can see on this, um, this like lighter green is here, and then it goes, uh, this um, goes into a darker green here, and it's like kind of connected. If you look at this, where the mouse is going, and then on the light green, it's only one shade of light green. If we go back to mine, um, I can show you the difference. So I'm not completely ripping off the, the style. 
if I go like these, um, you can see that I have it set to um, the grass is like it is still changing color, but it's like right on the edge, a sharp, crisp edge. Then this is a little uh, lighter uh, of, of rim lighting than this part. Um, that's the only real changes. But I, I did that not to do like, um, you know, copy my homework, but make a little bit of changes. I did that to, uh, um, to because I thought it looked nicer. It looked a little more, you know, it looked a little more like this. Anyway, okay, so let's talk about the list thing. So I kind of gave a little bit of intro, uh, but I wanted to talk about how I handled the lists. Um, so I create the list, and then every time I create a block, uh, it creates a whole range of, well, not a whole range, but a little bit of stuff. So here is the add block function. And all I do is I change this counter up one so that every block has a unique ID. Um, and uh, then I add a lot of stuff. So each block has a type. So this one has grass, this one has stone, this one has oak log. Um, and then the next item in that list, so if I actually run it and then show you, I can just show you it manually. Um, you can see, so there's four blocks right now. You can see that right here in world blocks. And then down below, there's world block one. This has three items. It has the type, which is grass. It has the world block one shape. So this is the size of the object and then the position. Um, and in shape and position, these are three values. And if I look down here, you can see shape. It has 12, 4, and 12. And then lower down is the position, which is that it's at 0, 0, and negative 5. So um, the, the unit or the axes in this game is x is positive in the right direction and negative in the left. y is positive up and negative down. And then z is positive up and negative down. But z is at a different ratio than then um, why so if you go up in the y direction you move vertically in the screen space a lot faster than if you move up and down another thing i added for the player is that the speed of the player in up and down or in the z direction rather um is i think doubled the speed of left and right just because when you're moving around it feels a lot more natural to move at the constant speed at any way you go um, I can show you what I mean by that if I change the speed over here. I think it's like literally right there. Yeah, this is the player controller script. And um, this is the gravity part, right, by the way. But if I go to Z, if I put this to 0 0.2, you'll see what happens. You can see that I'm moving a lot slower in the up and down direction. Um, and that's just because that's the, that's the angle of the camera. Uh, so I don't really like that. But anyway... So that's how I changed it. Oh, oh excuse me. <clears throat> oh my God, I just choked. Um, another uh, a thing about, um, well, actually, before I go into this, another thing about the, the game is that, or the way the blocks work, is that there. it's kind of, when I decided to make the block ratio, uh, a block face is, obviously, I showed you, it was, it was I can come over here to show you. Um, it's eight, it's 16 and 8, or 16 and um, 6, but it's 8 and 3 meaning this size is 16 and then this size is six tall, um, uh, 16 tall and six and six tall. But, um, and then, you know, obviously eight tall and three tall. Uh, and I thought that was a good ratio at first, but it's technically not because if I come over here and I make this wood log a two by two by two, it was hiding that it was actually a two by two by three. This is a two by two by two log. This is what a, like a perfect cube would look like and it just looks a little thin doesn't exactly look like a two by two by two log the three one does uh it looks a lot better so that was the issue now i've set it up though yeah um so that all i would have to do is change um where is it oh yeah wait custom block front no that's the brightness somewhere in here it shows uh, shows what I need right here. So game object surface size front and surface size top. These are the ratios. So this one stores eight and this one stores three. If I change these, so if I go and change surface size top, so instead of three, I put the four, you're going to see that the grass and the tops of all the blocks is going to be, there's going to be like a gap between them. Um, and that's because 
Oh, wait, I got to do it after the game's running. So see the gap? So all I would have to do is just change these numbers in the, in, in, in the beginning and just ha redesign all the assets to make it a different like ratio. So in this kind of game, you could just, um, uh, if you were like remixing it and stuff like that, you could just change those numbers so that the top is a lot bigger than the side. And now you have a lot more top down game. Um, so yeah, because all the, the way the math works for the custom blocks is I'm going to the bottom left of each block and then I'm rendering the textures from left to right uh, according to where they are. Um, if it's on the left side, then it's going to be this this texture. But if it's in the middle, it's going to be the middle texture and all that stuff. Um, and then the only way you have to worry about the texturing is um, when you do your texturing, there's a name, uh, there's a, a way you name it. So if I go here, you do world, land, and then the, the name of the item because this is in the world and this is part of the land. Um, I, that also implies that I'm going to do like sea and sky and things, which I might, but I just left it there or I just had it there so that, um, the options are available. And then you do custom. Cause if I go up here, this is not a custom item. Um, and in the script, I don't think I have it so that it checks if it says custom, but I might put that in so that if you're trying to do a custom block with an item like this, it wouldn't work or maybe i don't know i don't know how i do that actually it, it's not in there because if i have an error watch i see what happens if there's an error oh, i should have went back so for the grass block if i have like the like i'll do this one if this one didn't exist the name didn't exist so if i copy that and then i put h and i run it that's what happens this this missing textures block comes up and it's a full block it's just cut off by the grass um and that's how you know if anything's going wrong so all you gotta do is put that in and it fixes it. Um, and so the namespace, obviously, let me go back and that in that is after custom, it's uh, you put the side, the side of the block it's on. So this is the front of the block, the one facing the camera more. And then the grass part is the top. Then you do the, the, how do I explain it? Like if this was the center, then this would be middle, middle. And then the top left right here would be top left and then top middle and then top right and then middle right so yeah so the first num the first um word after front the top denotes the vertical part so if it's up above the middle then it's top and if it's below it's bottom and then the second one is denotes the ver uh, horizontal so if it's you know left middle and then right that's all you got to do um for all the sides so there should be eight um, oh no, there should be nine fronts and nine tops uh, to make a full block. Um, that's it. That's how I've been adding blocks. So I have the oak log, the grass, and the stone. I'm going to add, obviously, a ton more for, like, ores and things like that. Now, um, the next thing is, so I went through that, and I could go through the physics, but I'm not going to go through the physics because um, it's, it's pretty simple, but it's a little jank. And uh, it's, I could make a whole nother video on it. So it's a little long too, even though it's simple. It's like you have to, everything I was, I would say about it. You had to do for the X, Y, and the Z and a lot of nuance. There's a lot of nuance, but it is simple. Actually, it probably isn't simple. Maybe it's just simple to me now because I've done it so many times. Um, but I will say for the physics engine, um, it is only, it only works for objects that are in, I forget the term, but it's in, um, it's when the objects are aligned. Oh, axis aligned. So see how all the blocks are like, you know, all facing the camera. There's none turned at a weird angle and none turned like in the Z direction or anything weird stuff like that, right? It's all just blocks. That's the only way it works. If you have a block that's angled a little differently, the math pretends like it's angled normally. There's no angling. You just use the, the, the shape and the position. Another thing before I go on is that when you do run oh hold on well i'm gonna have to be doing some editing now because <laughs> i i was uh uh interrupted a little bit um so i'm gonna have to cut that out but anyway um what i was saying was something oh yeah for the blocks so like if i remove everything but that big block right so it's all these and um actually it's this might not be true just because of the positions I'm having it at, but 
the origin of the block is not in the center of the block. Okay, it's actually right in the the x direction center, but in the z direction, it's right at this like point. So it's on the most negative of the z's point, and it's all the way at the floor of it. So like, if I were to make this bigger, let me go on top. Actually, not bigger. If I were to make this longer, so instead of twelve, it's like fifteen. This side of the the face will not come closer to the camera. It's only the back side, and it it. It did it, but it's it's hard to like show. Let me do like thirty or two hundred and thirty. Let me do thirty. You'll see it more. Yeah, it's off the screen, but this part never moved. Um, and just the way I was doing the math in the beginning, that's how it worked out. Uh, so when I do the physics, I have to like take that into consideration and subtract that so that the origin's in the center of the block. But um, it's actually not that big of a deal. Uh, it makes things a little bit nicer to deal with when I'm dealing with the order of, of the blocks because now it doesn't matter how long a, a block is as long as the blocks front face is not farther in the not more negative in the Z direction it doesn't get pasted on top of the block in front of it so it see the um, see the this line right here of the stone and then this line of the grass those are the front faces and that's where they are in space. So there's probably probably like six, no, like five, yeah, five blocks, literally five blocks of distance between them. If I were to make this, um, so negative 10, negative five, that's what I meant. It's five distance. If I were to make this negative nine, you'll see that come a lot closer. Uh, you can see that they're very close, but it looks a little weird and it's because they are intersecting And like in if you saw the blocks in the real world, they're like inside each other right now. But I can't render something like that. It's going to render the full block uh, normally. It can't render intersections just to render engines like that. So if I do 10, I believe 10 will make it get in front. Okay, no, 11 then. 11 will push it into front. Yeah. And at that point, the other block is behind it. But even though, even though that the order I put them in is different it still does that which is the good part now the problem is that that doesn't work all the time there's a, some bug somewhere that i need to fix because i tried putting a block of wood on top of this block of wood and it didn't work because the, the point is that it's supposed to be if it's if it's um in front in the z direction or negative in the z direction then it should be pasted in front and if it's above it should be pasted in front as well um to block out that bottom part uh, so yeah, anyway, there we go. So let's move on to this part, the f loop. So everything in the game, the entire game right now at least, is running off of these um, three things. And two of them is like not, I mean, it's, it's a player and stuff, but like um, these are very, this is a lot more, this is a lot more stuff going on. So obviously it might be a little weird that you're still seeing the player pop up even though player is not being run. That's because the rendering of the player happens in the world's render, um, but the controlling and everything else of the players happens in that script. And that's because I need to render the player in a certain order, and it has to be after the blocks or before the blocks, depending on where where it is in the Z direction. Um, and actually, oh, I just realized something, how I, I did the code. So it renders based on the back of the block. So if I'm farther from the back of the block, then it renders. But if I'm obviously not farther than the back of the block, I'm in front of it. As you can see, I'm in front of the block right now. So that's good. I, f I forgot I did that. Okay, so let's go with the simple stuff first. Animation counter, that just um, is is what you might think. It's the thing that ticks up the animation. So it's right over here. So this is being run. So I have the FPS of five, I believe. So every five frames, it ticks up the counter once. And that tick is what run what changes the animations. So see how he's running? If I were to go and put this to one, he should be like, yeah, <laughs> he should be a speedy boy. It's cycling through the animations a lot faster. <laughs> That's so funny. And then if I put it to like 10, obviously it's gonna be a lot slower. Um, but five was a good one. This looks like he's running. Maybe it's a tiny bit slow, but it's it's good. Also, he Whenever he's, he, she, I don't know, whatever this creature is, um, whenever they are, the velocity is less than a certain threshold, they look forward and then they continue their, oh. Okay, yeah, so what I was saying in that clip, 
so this is after I recorded the whole thing. Um, but I, I got food at one point and, um, so I had to like stop and I, I lost what I was saying. Um, so I, what I was saying, or at least what I think I was saying when I looked at the video right now is the threshold with the, the velocity. Um, this is kind of embarrassing if that's exactly not what I was saying, but I, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to really look through it. As I say later, I'm not going to look through it, but I did look through it anyway. Um, so they do their animation cycle, like the blinking and the looking at the camera when the threshold of the speed is at a certain low. So like, watch, if I'm looking, if I'm running forward and I stop touching, it'll turn back and look at the camera. Uh, initially, I didn't have it turn back look at the camera but i thought that's good like anytime you stop if anyone's making a video about this which is highly unlikely uh like playing the game or if, or if you're just playing the game it there's something nice about having it go to the character so that at least when you're not moving you can see the character it's inviting in a way um so yeah uh, that's what i was saying i believe <laughs> or you just got redundant information or you got information that i never even mentioned anyway okay okay um <laughs> Well, I got food this time, so that's uh, why there'd be a weird cut there. Um, but anyway, I, th I believe I was just talking about the animation counter. Not entirely sure what exactly I was count uh, talking about, and I'm not going to look through the footage. I don't know how long I've been recording, but it's definitely a lot longer than I would like to look through. And I just probably look at the end of that clip, but I'm not going to anyway. <laughs> anyway, so that's the counter. Um, then the player script is everything about the player. Let me go to it. Um, oh my god, for a second I thought I wasn't recording. Um, I don't know. That was weird. Okay, so here's the player. So there's two things about the player. Um, there's the motion and then the camera. So the camera follows the player. So that's why you get the smooth, like, how, it, you know, the player's not in the center of the camera. He's, like, transitioning around. And, like, it's smooth. It makes it a lot more, a lot better. And that's right here. So the camera changes based on a 10% of the distance to the player. If I obviously put this to a 1, it would go directly to the cam the player. And this is what you get. And it's, you know, it's, 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 it has its merits if you, I don't know, that's a style if you want, but I like the 10%. It feels a lot nicer. Um, then the next thing is motion. So it, you might be wondering why there's a two here. Um, what I noticed is, okay, so I'm going to put it to one. I'm not going to explain it yet, but if I put it to a one and I do the physics, if I go up to a wall and I walk against it, um, oh, you know what? Oh, you know what? Actually, the physics can handle it. I don't think it was initially handling it quite well. Wait, why can't I jump? Oh, did I not? Wait, if I put this to two, am I going to jump higher? I do. Okay, I got, that's one thing I got to change. But, okay, this this was supposed to do this. Basically, in physics, um, you're not... Physics engines, unless... There might be some, but um, they're never perfect. Um, in that... Uh, how to explain it like you can always go s a certain speed in a game that will cause you to glitch through a wall or something you know you see that all, all the time in games now you can create physics engines that handle this but then they're very slow so for gaming the physics engines basically just check if you are in a block right so like let's say I was running fast enough where one frame I'm in on the right side of this wood block and the next frame I'm on the other side of the wood block it would never know I went through it it would think I'm just walking normally and nothing would happen. So what I do is instead of, um, and that wasn't the issue. That's not why I did this like repeating motion thing that I have here. The issue was that when you come up to a wall and I go off the side of it, um, it would like, it would like, uh, teleport me a, just enough distance around the block that it looked strange. And then doing it twice and t like lowering the speed would cause it to, um, uh, fix that so um that was not a good explanation but just tr trust my word for what what i'm trying to say uh so instead i would repeat the whole movement physics and then the controller and i would basically if i'm repeating it twice and i have to move this person at half the speed so that's right here so if i'm doing it twice then one out of two is or one divided by two is obviously half and I need to find where the jump is. So it's right here. So yeah, that needs to be multiplied by um, the multiplier to change what I was seeing earlier. So there we go. Three is now in there. So now I should, oh, okay, so I should be six. 
six is good and then now it works so that if I ran this at a speed of one it should also jump wow okay that's not what I thought should happen am I doing something else wrong hold on um the multiplier would be half so if I'm doing it twice oh well um that's kind of strange you know because I don't think I'd actually have a way to solve that in theory, that should be fine. Yeah, but technically, okay. Technically, that, yeah, there's, sorry, I'm not gonna, it's hard to explain what I'm thinking right now, but technically I can't do this because, I'll try to explain it. Basically, there's only one single frame where I'm touching the top, see denoted right here, top, I'm touching the top of a block. Then there's the right side, back side, left side, front, and all that stuff. But there's only a frame that I'm touching the top after it, like as I jump. Which means that if I'm rent if I'm doing the thing twice, the next frame doesn't have a jump, and it tries to. So the first frame was, yeah, it would be multiplying by the multiplier, but in theory it shouldn't be multiplying by the multiplier. It should be the same force in the beginning, but then, uh, or it, no matter how many frames you repeat, it should be the same force of the jump because it's only happening for one tick of, of calculation, let alone, um, of frame. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna leave this at two, even though it's technically doing more work than it should. Um, all right, let's see. If I put it at one, I can actually leave it at one because it looked fine, and I'll just make the six. Uh, I don't need to. Why is it? If I put it at one, it should be able to jump up this, and I can't. I guess four. Okay, I'll leave it at four, and and whatever. We'll just leave it at four. Okay, and we'll do one calculation, which is faster. Okay, so that's the player. Basically, here in the controller, I just have the mouse or the, the keys being pressed and I'm doing a negative for the A and then adding and then, you know, that simple thing that you do so that you can get uh, one line of code to represent an axis of movement. Uh, and yeah, and then this is the movement itself. So I'm taking the acceleration, multiplying it by the friction, then I'm um, changing the velocity by the acceleration, then multiplying acceleration by the, fric the drag and then changing the position and all that stuff. Um, okay. Now, oh, and here's the physics. This is the physics strip, right? Uh, the script right here. This does all the physics for the player. I'm not too sure if I'm going to keep it this way. Wow, it's a lot longer than I remember. Um, because what I kind of want is if I'm going to add mobs and stuff, they need to have this script for themselves. Uh, and I don't want to copy the script over for a whole list of, of like, entities i want the player to be considered an entity as well and everything run over under this one script but that would imp that would also mean that i need a list of entities uh and if i have a list of entities and how i'm going to render them is i need to calculate every single frame exactly where they are in the world and just like the player but then that also means that in this place that i'm rendering it uh, of the player along with the blocks which is right here i basically say okay if i'm you know behind a block then render the player there then set the player to true and then never do that again never render the block the player but then i'd have to somehow fit that with every character or every entity and every entity would need its own thing like this which i'd have to store obviously in the list of the player or in the uh, list of the entity but that also means that now the player has its own unique thing that doesn't need to be a unique thing i could just make the player its, ent its own entity a lot of stuff like that yeah so that's weird and then here's the player's script this is what renders the player rather um and yeah so i'm just getting the direction of which direction i'm facing um and this is what points the character in a certain direction a uh, certain direction and then i'm taking the frame and modding four and that's giving me and adding one and that's giving me the number in that direction of what frame is the running animation uh and then if i'm not moving then it does the the still animation, which is it's just a blink, and then he looks at the camera or she, or whatever that, you know the character is. Uh, I'm gonna here. I'm gonna firmly say that this is a. Well, I don't need to. Never mind. Well, let's move on from that. Okay. And then another thing is that I have. Um, here's where the shadow goes, and and the rendering. This is a little right here. This is a little bit. Um, how should I say this? This is. 
unnecessarily elongated. This should go in its own function of rent, like actually rendering the player, or rather, this should go in its own function of deciding what the name should be. But I have it out here because I didn't want to make another function just specifically for the character. And now another thing is, so here's this this right here. See the renderer 2D image. All of this. This is how I render everything in the game. This one thing renders, well, sorry. Uh, well, yeah, this renders everything. And then the custom blocks uh, use this function uh, in their own weird way. And so at the end of it, if I if I put like 56, it's gonna make the character's shadow really bright. So I didn't mean the shadow. I wanted the player. So yeah, the player is incredibly br bright. And if I you know, do negative, it's gonna be super dark. But I added this. Um, I also kind of want to do a ghost effect on the player, uh, like or a transparency effect as well. But I added this so that if I wanted to change the time of day, I could do that by changing the brightness of all the all the items. Um, so if I go to the block renderer, which I don't actually remember where that is. Um, this is where the custom blocks are, but where do I render? I just, I'm being stupid. I just went to it earlier. Okay, so if I, right here, if I do, right here, um, custom image. If I set, I, because it, sorry, let me, let me just do it instead of explaining what's happening. If I set the thing somewhere here to be, yeah, the, let's do front. If I set this to be like negative, 40 then the top will be bright but the side of blocks will be dark and i'll do that right here and boom and very dark i should do like native 15 or something and so that's like a harsher lighting now scratch the brightness isn't like real lighting brightness so um what that means is that when things get darker in the real world they should be uh i don't know if they I know when things get brighter, they lose their, their um, saturation. I don't know if that's true for darkness. So I think it is, but not to the same level. But anyway, when I make these things darker, as you saw, they're very saturated and it looks unnatural. But that's you know just how it works. This is how it has to be. Okay, I've talked a lot about this stuff. I never went to talk about... Um... Oh, no. Did I finish up? I think I kind of finished up. Um, yeah, I, I guess I kind of finished up everything. So that's the game. And then obviously I showed before you can walk on the floor, but what uh, the next thing I'm probably going to do is if you saw, let me go back to that uh, other guy. Let me just make a new tab instead of, you know, leaving the tab. Um, if you saw with that other guy or girl prime guy, so that's probably a guy. There's like this little line effect, like the, the, Platforms are in, sucking in the water, if you see. Um, okay, I have to take all that off again. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're kind of sunken in the water. So I kind of want to do that as well because it looks right now like I'm on just a blue floor. This should be water. And I kind of want to like make it so that you can swim and stuff. Um, so what I'm going to need to do is in the block render, I'm going to need to say, okay, if if the origin is below that dist that spot, then um, render a line in front, which is pretty simple, but I, it's in a way it's tedious, so I don't want to do that right now. Oh, man. I'm so tired. Long day. Okay. Um, woke up really, really early today. So, anyway, um, yeah, that's that's it. So that's the announcement. I hope you look forward to this game coming out oh oh wait 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 <laughs> sorry one more thing before i end it um before i ended uh the video uh the question would be how would i you know how would the the player interact with the things around it if it's gonna be like a survival game you want to collect resources how do you actually go about doing the collection do you run up with the character and just look at it intensely and it'll pop or something i was thinking that at first but um it's i want more interaction with the mouse especially because if you are in um in a mobile device which actually 
now that I think about it, if you're on a mobile device, you want to be able to move with the keyboards. But you want to use as much mouse interaction or touch interaction as you can for games. That's more engaging. So what I'm going to do is, since I already had that script that renders the, the objects in screen space, all I got to do is see, okay, if you're rendering the object in screen space here, that my mouse must be over it. And then if I click, I'm engaging with that block and just find whatever piece that is from. So what I mean is, Obviously, these blocks are constructed out of a bunch of pieces, as I said before. All I'd have to do is say, okay, whatever piece that block is being constructed from the whole block, then you, then you know what you're clicking. So I would click over here, it would be clicking this big block. Or if I clicked over here, it'd be clicking this big block. If I clicked here, it'd be the wood block. Then that also means that I have to make sure that I know which block is in front uh, in the rendering So basically, if I'm clicking here, I'm clicking in front of the wood and the grass block at the same time. And I don't want to collect both of them or I don't want to like mine both of them, right? Um, so what I would do is I would say, okay, in that order list, it would first detect, okay, I'm clicking in front of the grass block because it's behind, it's happening before the wood block. Then I would say, okay, save that block. And if, if I ever am clicking in front of another block that happens later in the script, then um, reassign that variable that's storing this block to the oak block and then that last block that's been assigned will be the last the most front block in the in the um, array of blocks that to the camera and then i would just say okay i'm clicking on the block and then maybe i would add a damage to the block but i'm not going to add a damage like renderer because that'd be a little difficult i could but then every single thing oh no no you know what? actually never mind i i was gonna say every single a piece of a block would have to have its own frame uh, of animation. Like each block would have to have like 10 frames of like um, durability going down, like in Minecraft, you know, the, the cracking. But I could just add something on top that's transparent of the cracking. I, I, actually, that's what Minecraft does anyway. So, so yeah, I'll do that. And, and yeah, uh, there we go. That's how the game was going to run. But I still don't have a story if there will be, or I don't have anything like that. This is just the fundamentals of the game and how it's going to run uh and, and yeah um so yeah thank you for watching and i hope you enjoy i hope you enjoy seeing this game develop um and maybe one day uh, if all goes well i can even make this a full-on game in like unity or something but i usually tend to make things in scratch initially just to get the concept down and just to have a little bit of fun with it um uh, and the challenge of Scratch is fun as well. It's hard to do certain things, so you have to make things to do those things, like list nesting. I have to make a list nesting system so that I could do list nesting uh, instead of like Unity or any, you know, or like C Sharp and all those. Unity is not a programming language, obviously, but it uses C Sharp and all that. Um, they obviously have list nesting. Uh, so yeah. So um, and to that, like with the game I just made, uh, the th so this game I made a long time ago, but I made the the uh, remastered version of this game um, in Unity. And it's a lot better than this game. But this was the uh, the original, so it was like an homage. And so hopefully, maybe one day I'll make a homage to the game that I was, uh, Landycraft, you know. Anyway, okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, uh, and later.